Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about all the books that I read this spring. I haven't really been up to like the wrap up and TBR game, uh, so I need to step up my game a little bit. But right now I'm going to just do a wrap up of spring because I haven't done a wrap up for April, May and June and those are the spring months. So before I start this video I want to quickly mention something that I usually say at the end of my videos and that is that you guys can follow me on all of my social media pages, especially Goodreads and Bookstagram are I think the kind of social media pages that you guys would like to follow me on the most so I will leave links to that in the description down below you can also follow me on snapchat on my personal Instagram and you can even send me emails but I'm just trying to be a little bit more active on my bookstagram and I don't think a lot of you guys know that I actually have one I just need to post more often and if you guys will follow me on my bookstagram I will have more motivation to do so and if you add me on Goodreads you can always keep up with what I'm currently reading what I'm rating my books etc etc but now let's start with the first book that I finished in April the first book that I finished in April is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by JK Rowling which is illustrated by Jim Kay this was my first time reading Harry Potter in English and this is my first reread of Harry Potter I've only read the first book in Dutch and I have to say it's so much better to read the book in English you just have all the original names and puns and it just makes it so much better plus reading from this edition it's just so beautiful there are so many gorgeous illustrations in the book and those illustrations make the reading experience like so much better even I'm trying to find a good one okay here we have Hagrid it's just such a beautiful book and uh, I can't wait to reread uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets in the illustration in the illustrated version because I don't know it was just a really good experience to read the first one and the third illustrated version of the prisoner of azkaban is coming out in october so i'm really really looking forward to all of these illustrated editions of harry potter that are coming out because they are beautiful after harry potter i read everything everything by nicola yoon i'm pretty damn sure that everyone has already read this book or already knows what this is about but i'm just gonna say it anyways this book is about Madeline and she is allergic to basically everything so all of her life she's been like alone in her house with only her mom and her nurse but then a new neighbor comes and it's a really cute boy and she starts coming in contact with him and she starts falling in love with him and you need to read the rest of the book or otherwise you will get spoiled don't watch the movie trailer because it's gonna spoil the whole story uh it's such an easy read i read this one in three days and i thought it was good but it wasn't as good as i felt like a lot of other people thought that this book was the ending was kind of Meh. and I've heard that a lot of people don't like the ending. I'm just like okay with it, I guess. So I think that I would give this one like a three and a half to four stars. I just really enjoyed it and I hope that I will be able to see the movie, but I don't know when or where it's going to be in the Dutch cinemas. So yeah, we shall see when I will watch the movie. Oh, and Harry Potter, obviously, of course, a five out of five stars. I loved it. I just didn't say the rating, so that's why I'm saying it right now. After I read Everything Everything, I wanted to read something fantasy again, and then I read A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I've been meaning to pick this book up for such a long time, and I finally did it. I was just always quite intimidated by the fact that this is like new adult or adult fantasy, uh, or at least that's what people say it is. But to be honest, I felt like it wasn't like as intimidating as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, the font is a little bit different from what I'm used to but the chapters are rather short. So if you don't know this book is uh, focused on Kel who is an Antari which is a very rare kind of person who can travel between parallel Londons. In this fantasy world you have four kinds of parallel Londons. You have Red London which is full of magic and is kind of like the happy place to be. Then you have Grey London which is our kind of world. Uh, Black London which have like there's just too much magic it's a very dark and mysterious world and then you also have white London which is like an evil version of the happy magical red London so Kel travels between these parallel Londons and he does something very legal he just take different artifacts from the different Londons and he sort of collects them and then one day he stumbles upon this black stone this black talisman and it's very mysterious and creepy things start happening and you also follow another perspective in this book which is from Lila Bard and she's like a street thief, a wannabe pirate and 
I really loved this book. I love the characters. I really like V.E. Schwab's writing. I've also read um, This Savage Song by V.E. Victoria Schwab and I have to say I definitely prefer A Darker Shade of Magic. This world was just so much more interesting and I felt like it was more sort of like developed and clear to me how the magic sort of worked. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. I think I'm gonna give this one like a four and a half out of five stars. It was just a ton of fun and I cannot wait to read A Gathering of Shadows. Although I've heard mixed things about it. People say that nothing really happens in that book. Um, so we shall see what I think of it. I find that whenever I read fantasy or contemporary, I just have to switch it up. So I read like contemporary, fantasy, contemporary, etc. So I read A Darker Shade of Magic and after that I needed some contemporary again. So I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Baki Albatali. Everyone is just talking about this book and about uh, the upside of Unrequited and just talking about Becky Albertalli. I thought this book was very cute. It was just a nice quick read, but I have to say that it wasn't as good as everyone hyped it up to be. Everyone's like, oh my god, this book is such an amazing contemporary. It is adorable. It's like the cutest book you've ever read. And the thing was, it just took me a long time to really sort of like connect with the characters and really feel for them. I don't know, it was just sometimes the word use in this book was just a little too fake high schoolish. It was like, oh my god, I can't even. And I'm like, I don't use that. I never say that. It sounds stupid. Like, what can't you even? I don't get it. I sometimes was just kind of frustrated with the sort of language or how things were like word it being put into sentences. I did really enjoy this book, don't get me wrong. This book is about Simon who is gay but he is not out of the closet. He hasn't told it to anyone basically but he is talking online with this boy called Blue. Simon and Blue are emailing and one day Simon is emailing Blue in like his school library but he forgets to log out of his email. So one of his classmates finds out that um, Simon is gay and he sort of blackmails Simon into setting him up with a girl that he really likes. It just follows that and it doesn't sound cute but it is cute but it's not as cute as I feel everyone is like hyping it up to be. It's just a nice quick read. I would probably give this one like a three and a half out of five stars but I am very excited to uh, read more of Becky Albertalli so I'm definitely gonna get the upside of Unrequited. Then I went on vacation to Bonaire and I was just all of a sudden feeling the need to reread the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I reread A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I still really enjoyed this book after reading it for the second time, but I do feel like I, I would rate it a little lower than the first time that I read it. I think back then I gave it like a four and a half to five out of five stars, but now I would definitely give it like a four. Nothing really big happens in the middle of this book, just like the last 100 pages are very like, action-packed. I love Lu Shen. He's such a fun character. He's so just like sarcastic and he's one of my favorites. And I just love the world of Perithian and the Fae. It's so interesting. After I finished my reread of A Court of Thorns and Roses, I also had to start my reread of A Court of Mist and Fury. But I don't know what it is with me though because I've read the first 100 pages but I'm just not feeling it right now. I just don't know. It's just taking a long time to really get to the action-packed part again. Right now I'm on page 135, but at the moment I'm just not really feeling it. So I am just putting this down for a bit and we shall see when I will finish A Court of Mist and Fury. I hope this month in July, but we shall see. And I just wasn't feeling it, so I picked up another cute fluffy contemporary and that is Wonder Lost by Jen Malone. This is a contemporary read about Aubrey and Aubrey's sister was supposed to go on this like bus trip through Europe with a ton of senior citizens for uh, her further education but for some reason her sister cannot do this anymore and Aubrey has to fill in for his sister without anyone knowing that it's Aubrey and not her sister. So Aubrey doesn't know anything about Europe. She has been at her home, in her hometown, all her life. So this is like a whole new experience for her. She doesn't know anything about all the places that she's gonna visit. So it's a, it's definitely a big challenge for her. Uh, and she also meets a really cute guy called Sam who is now one of my new favorite fictional guys ever. He is so 
cute and adorable and funny and ah this book was just really awesome I especially could kind of like connect with Aubrey on the level of like being scared of new things and meeting new people and being just in a completely new situation. The main thing why I love this book so much was the traveling aspect. Aubrey went to places that I have been myself, not all of them, but I have been to Amsterdam, of course, because that is the capital of my country. So yeah, and uh, I believe they also went to Belgium. I have been there. I have also been in France. I've also been to Cinque Terre mm, in Italy. So it was also a ton of fun to see those places. I do have to say, like the writing style or something wasn't anything super special. This book was just a fluffy quick in-between read and nothing really more. So I do have to give it like a three and a half out of five stars. I do recommend it though if you want to read a quick fun summer contemporary read I definitely recommend this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos and I will see you guys next time. Bye!